My name is Marlon James. I'm a novelist, occasional short story writer, and a teacher of creative writing. And I'm here in Iowa for the Iowa Book Festival and to read at Prairie Lights. It's the second stop on this uh, crazy book tour I'm going on for my third novel, A Brief History of Seven Killings, which came out on October 2, Thursday. Uh, they usually ask about process. And it's funny because I actually don't believe in process. I, I got in a big fight with a student once because she was talking about her process. And I'm like, you don't have a process. She's like, yeah, my process is that you don't have a process. I was like, Gabriel Garcia Marquez does not have a process. What you have is a habit. And you need to cut that crap out. I hope I can say crap on the air. Um, but to come back to it, the reason why I, I, the process question is tricky because I think each book demands a different process. I did not write this book, which is set in a contemporary period, the way I wrote the last one, which is set 200 years ago. Um, it's just everything is different. The language is different. I think it's, it's a very dangerous thing to go into a new book with the same attitude. What worked for, and it's never worked for me, even the way in which the, my second novel worked best when I got up at five in the morning and wrote till nine. And I tried that with this book and it was horrible. I mean, I got nowhere. I, everything changed, the writing habits changed. I wrote in the day. The type of music I listened to changed. Um, the way in which I approach writing, this one was a lot more freeform, a lot less indebted to this idea of what a good novel should be. Oh God, quiet makes me so nervous. I never write in quiet. Um, not really. The, my second novel I wrote when I was on the tour for the first. And that changed a lot of things because you're not going to have a quiet place. A quiet place is putting on something like Ambient or Tim Hecker on the headphones and sit down in Barnes & Noble and write. So you write wherever you, you steal time. It's waiting for the, the rent a car before you drive to the next venue. It's writing time, it's finding time in cafes, bookshops. It's realizing that background noise is just as abstract as silence. Um, even when I'm writing, I'm always writing to music. Every book I've written has a, a playlist and a soundtrack. So I don't really, I don't, I don't believe in this sort of quiet place. I just don't have the time for it. When I'm writing, I am surfing 10 websites at the same time. I have music going on. I have every single distraction I can think of. Um, I have pictures on the wall. I have charts of every character. I, I kind of, I write in noise. I write in noise, I write in distraction, I write in background, quiet, right? I write in friends coming over to bother me. It, it all kind of ends up in the book. I do structure things out. That's so heartening to hear that Ethan Canning does it because so many writers are so opposed to that. They're so opposed to structures and plot charts and so on. It horrifies them because I think it kills spontaneity. And actually that gave me spontaneity. It's like I can tell when a poet has studied prosody uh, that it, it, knowing, it's like knowing the rules in order to break them. I had charts for all sorts of reasons. One, I was dealing with hundreds of characters. Um, to without me sort of plotting out where people are going, I easily start to play favorites. It's it's you know when you have you know have a you know tall, sexy, conflicted gay hitman, it's kind of hard to compete with that. <laughs> Uh, if you're just, you know, if you're just some girl standing on a corner, it's kind of hard to compete with a, a, a big hitman from Chicago who's in Miami on a last score. So you, it, it, it forces you to pay, it forces me to pay attention to other characters. And mine was, um, I didn't have index cards. I actually had a chart, almost like a spreadsheet, and rows and columns. And each column was a different character. Each row was actually at different times of the day, so I knew what was going on at 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10. Because uh, each, each section of the book, even though it's a big book, each section of the book is a day. Another rule, I don't have a lot of rules, but one of the rules I have, one of the rules I have with writing is that at the end of the day, I must at some point say, I didn't see that coming. And if that didn't happen, I basically keep writing till it does. Which is another difference from how I wrote the last book. The last book, I was very strict on it. I started strict with writing it. I started at five, I ended at nine. I didn't care where I was. I stopped. This one, 
you know, I stopped when I surprised myself. Which, you know, you can't plot that. Um, damn, what do I do? Kind of know, I just write to the end and then end up being depressed for the rest of the year. <laughs> I, you know, I, I mean, I got to Miami quite a bit. Except I'm not writing in Miami because if you're, if you're not going to the beach and you're not going to the club, there is absolutely nothing else to do. So I actually get a lot of work done. Uh, so usually that, but most of the times when I, you know, I love to not write. I, I absolutely love it. I will sit down. I know writers who sit down and I go, I haven't do, done a thing all day. I'm like, yeah, I love to not write. Well, and I'll procrastinate forever. So I'll then sit down and write in big um, um, gusts. But I don't know. Downtime is really weird. Because I usually, I mean, the last time I finished a book, I looked around and some of my friends had kids. I'm like, when did that happen? <laughs> Uh, so, um, don't I think I just spend catching up on all the reading I couldn't do? Because I usually have a very set book list and I'm writing. Not with this book, but like my first book, my editor, my editor would, um, called me and said, why is everything gleaming in your novel? I said, what are you talking about? I don't gleam. I hate that word. It says everywhere in your book. Everything is gleaming. I make him very self-conscious about that. So no gleaming, no glitter. I, my students know, my, I'm, I'm, I have this thought of infamous band words list in class. Words which, some of which I think are just redundant, some I think are bad, some I just don't like. Like waft. I don't have a reason for hating it, but I will mark you low if you put it in a story. Waft, pulsate, illuminate, oh god, that was wretched. Ignominy. I asked my, I had a student wrote and I said, do you know what this word means? You don't, do you? You just thought it would look cute. Yeah, so there this, all these, word, these words they're not allowed to use. They're allowed one exclamation point for every 300,000 words. And they're fine with that. <laughs> yeah, um, two things. One, I haven't written the, the sort of... Um, the deeply personal, semi-autobiographical kind of thing. Usually I've resisted it. Um, I haven't done it. I'm interested in doing that. I still don't think I've written what's outside my window yet. So being in the present tense, I haven't done. But also really curious of doing the absolute opposite. I'm going so far back in the past. Not at all. I'm such a carnalist. I, I don't believe in that whole spiritual mumbo jumbo thing. It's funny because I'm not really an atheist either. But um, this sort of writing as communion, not really. Writing is work. You know, I sit down and I go to work. And I, if, if this were 50, 60 years ago, I'd be walking around with a, my little typewriter. Actually, when I started writing, I started seriously writing in when I was doing my, my undergrad was back in the 90s, I walked around with a typewriter. Because uh, when I was sketching, I was playing around, but when I sat down, I sat down to work. And to me, writing, it's a vocation. It's a, it's, it's a job, it's work. The thing you can't measure is when characters enter your head and won't leave. Because they, you don't dictate that. And that is kind of spooky, and, it is kinda, and there is no explanation for it. Oh God, I have... My, my answer to that is so simple, simple, it's simplistic. Writers write. And if you, are, if you wrote one book, you're somebody who wrote one book. That's great, but you're not a writer. Writers write. You know, I, I, I am around so many people and they spend so much time thinking about writing and debating writing and arguing about writing. And, and I'm like, no, writers write. Is, is one of the things that I like and envy about the commercial writers is one of the reasons why crime writers are my heroes. My, you know, I'm a bigger fan of, say, a James Elroy and a Richard Price than whatever people call literary novels. I think they're literary and I think they're sensational writers. But they have an ethic and, and they take it very seriously. And I think, you know, that's what makes a writer. Writers write. The easiest way to, to, to piss me off is panels like, What's, where is literature going? I was like, 
it's certainly not going to go in some stupid panel with people pondering about it. It's, you know, it's, it's um, you know, my response to that is that I'm too busy writing. I don't have time to ponder on the future of literature and all of that. It's such a, it's an annoying conversation. <laughs>